Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to day three of the Master Brick and Mortar Boot Camp. How are we feeling, JoJo? It doesn't get easier to say. No, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, podcasts and all the things. Um, as you guys know, my name is Kyle Strubing. I'm coming to you live from our house here in Flower Mound, Texas. Um, I'm here with my life partner, business partner, all things partner, Joanne Mester, soon to be strubing. Jojo, baby, how are we doing this morning? Afternoon. I'm pumped. This topic is one that is so, so very vital to the success of your brick and mortar business. And it's one of our favorite topics to talk about because it's a mistake that we made early on yes about location for sure and as we open more and more businesses we learned more and more and we're going to share all of that with you today so let me pop in here and get my fancy powerpoint let us know uh, get in the chat let us know where you are joining us from would love love seeing how everybody where everybody joins from Tucson, Arizona, San, San Francisco, Brand. San Diego, Washington, D.C. I love it. How is it? Can you see there in Washington, D.C.? I heard the, the clouds and the smoke is pretty bad there. Oh, from the fires? Can it, from, oh. the, from Canada. Boston, Springfield, Odessa. Yeah, NYC. There you New go. York City, Georgia. Well, I just love the representation from everywhere. It's so, so cool to see. Tampa, OKC, love it. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining us. As I said earlier, today is all about how to find a profitable location for your business. We're going to be sharing with you five very simple strategies that are super simple, but absolutely vital to be aware of. Yeah, we're trying to set you up for success here is what we're trying to do. That's right. So we're going to take you from feeling confused or overwhelmed or unsure about your next decision to feeling confident and clear on exactly how to go about finding a location for the, your business. So by the end of our time together, you're going to learn how to find a location and five key strategies to ensure your location sets you up for profitability. Who's ready to dive in? Give me a yes in the chat. All right, stay with us till the end. We had two winners yesterday of our Amazon gift cards. Woohoo! I love the yeses. And we are giving away two more today. So stay with us till the end. Um, we love giving away some Amazon gift cards to help you get started on your brick and mortar business journey. We will also be doing Q&A again. I know all of you have been enjoying hopping in and asking questions. So we'll be doing that again today. We'll also be sharing with you today how you can continue to work with us beyond this boot camp. And if you choose to continue your brick and mortar journey with us, we have a special bonus for you on how you can get a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one session with Kyle and myself where we can go a little deeper on your specific business and you can ask us questions. Two-on-one session though. Oh, huh? well, I guess one on two. Well, I don't know how that works, but yeah, no. <laughs> it's a great it, it's a great opportunity to really uh dig into the details with us. And like us, like we've said before, we're an open book on this stuff, guys, for sure. That's right. So stay with us. We'll share with you how you can get that. All right. You guys have been showing up live. You've invested in yourself and taking the time. Those who really spend time with us live tend to get the most out of our trainings. So let's make this count. Let's turn off those distractions and really focus on our time here together today. All right. If you are feeling excited about bringing your product or service to the world, then you are in the right place with us today. If you are feeling motivated, to leave that nine to five or build a job that you are in love with, then you are most certainly in the right place with us today. Or maybe you are just feeling intrigued, intrigued by the idea of owning a brick and mortar business, intrigued by the idea of creating some passive income or some more revenue, then you are most certainly in the right place with us today. So I'd love to know, which one are you? Are you excited to bring your passion to others? Are you motivated to be your own boss? Or are you intrigued by the earning potential that a brick and mortar business can provide? Tell us in the chat, which one are you? Love to know. I think when we first started, 
it was definitely a little bit of intrigued by the earning potential and very motivated to be our own boss. We were tired of being in the corporate world. All of the above. I all love that. Above. All, all excited. All yes. Well, you guys are in the right place. Whatever your motivation may be, we are here to support you on this journey. We've been in the trenches before with many others, and that's what we're here to do with you today. So, yeah, I just wanted to kind of go through and, and show you, um, just relate a little bit on this and, and go through our story. Uh, the overall arcing theme about the story is that it was not perfect, okay? Um, we started five years ago in an industry that was, you know, I want to say volatile, maybe. Um, it was something very new. We felt very confident in it for sure. But as you can see, as the stages went through, the first one being Joanne with our signed lease, we were just ecstatic to get in there, okay? And we made it, we made mistakes. There's a lot of things we wish we would have learned that we're teaching you guys along the way. Um, some very costly mistakes, some not as. The point being, guys, is we're not anybody... No, I mean, I think we're experts on this, but we're not some crazy wheelers and dealers or anything. We are in the trenches, like JoJo says with you guys. Like this afternoon, I will be at the store, you know, cleaning that float tank that you can see there. Point being is we've, we evolved and we learned a lot of things and we did not give up. We were, you know, some of the people in the middle of the pandemic just laying there till two in the morning thinking of ideas on what to do. And honestly, I, I know, I don't think I know that it brought us stronger. It brought us together more as a couple and as a family, for sure. So with all that being said, as you can see, as we progress through, that's, you know, that that's my friend on the ladder there. Like, that's how we built these things. It wasn't some crazy, I was, you know, I was working a nine to five job. JoJo was in corporate America. We weren't anything special. We just started. We had a lot of faith in ourselves. And and we 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 made shit happen, pardon my French, but we just made it, we made it happen. And now, as you can see, we've kind of gone through, and that's that's our baby right there. That's one of our float tanks um on that lower left-hand corner where you know we it got us into the other more of a wellness industry, and that was kind of the biggest leap forward. It was a significant investment, but it didn't start there, is the point. It started, you know, started with a girl in a dream, but no, it started with. <laughs> It started with us struggling to get a lease. I mean, it really was, you know, it really was a struggle to get into a lease. There was a lot of things we wish we would have known. Um, and then, you know, kind of as you move to the right, we just, you know, we bootstrapped it and and we made it happen and it's grown into something bigger and better. And as you can see in that middle thing, you know, I mean, we're, we're about to get it. We're about to get married here after how, after this whole endeavor. So it, things are going well still. Yeah. I think the whole point is to share with you that we made a lot of mistakes in the right. beginning and we learned a lot. And now our passion and goal is to share with others what not to do so that you can learn from us. I've said this before, but there's so many resources out there for online businesses and there's not a lot out there for brick and mortar businesses. So our passion, you know, was first figuring out how to master opening these profitable businesses, which I feel that we did, but it took a lot of learning and struggle to get there. And so that's what we want to take away for all of you is kind of sidestep that struggle and that confusion. So we did, we opened multiple uh, profitable brick and mortar businesses. We've helped, I mean, shoot hundreds of different people um, throughout you know, just being able to get in there, helping them open their doors, consulting, things like that all across the country. Um, and we do, you know, we do over $5 million in revenue. Yeah. So. so I want you to think right now, imagine what it would feel like to own a business that you are passionate about that brings you financial freedom. Imagine that in your mind. Opening a brick and mortar business is an extremely powerful way to make an impact on the world while growing your income and freedom to life-changing levels. And I know that all of you are capable of doing that. I've seen so many people do it. And I know by the questions that you guys have been asking this week and showing up that y'all are more than capable of making. You're asking the right questions. You're asking the same questions. You're right along the path for sure. All right, so where are we going today? What will we be diving into? We're first going to share with you the two ways that you can go about obtaining a location for your business. 
No matter which way that you choose, I want you to feel empowered with some tools on how to find commercial locations. We're going to share those with you. We're going to walk you through the five pillars of what makes a good location. And I've got a, a resource for you that you can take with you moving forward, which is your location checklist. Then we are going to share with you about how you can work with us moving forward. And as always, we're going to end with some live Q&A and giveaways. That's my favorite part. Who's excited? Let's, Let's go. Do Let's get going in that chat for sure. For sure. All right. You want to kick us off? I'll kick us off. Step one, finding finding a location. There's two options, right? Um, one of them are, can be to find a real estate or find a real estate uh, agent. Or the second one is going to be uh, going solo. You know, finding and securing that on your own, which makes sense, obviously, right? Yeah. So one caveat here is if you are buying your location outright, we typically always recommend that you do work with a real estate agent. But if you are leasing, then you do have the option to go through that lease process of finding and securing your location on your own. So we're going to walk you through the pros and cons of that here in a minute. Option number one is is using that real estate agent. Uh, commercial real estate agent is going to be someone who works with the clients you guys uh, to sell or rent properties used for business purposes. Commercial real estate agents are paid off of commissions. Um, I believe it's from the from the property management or the landlord during the duration of the lease. You still pay for it if you think it's all it's all built into the cost of your actual lease. So don't don't get any you know. Don't, don't get any ideas that, you know, nothing in this world's for free, for sure. So, you know, it is in there. One of the pros, and like I said, like we mentioned, I think yesterday or the day before, we did go with a real estate, uh, a commercial real estate agent the first time. Um, one of the pros was, was the expertise and knowledge. Um, it was time saving uh, for us. It cut down on the learning curve 100%. Uh, you are able to leverage off of their network. Um you know, you have somebody who can has a frame of mind and you can leverage their negotiation skills. Um, and also you can have a peace of mind. You don't feel like you have to own the thing altogether and in yourself, in, in and of yourself. Some of the cons, like I said before, they make a cut. They make a cut. And that sounds, you know, like, okay, cool. But when you think about it over three, four, five year lease, if they make hundred, they know that's a hundred bucks, that's a significant amount of money. Um, and I know sometimes negotiations can get caught up with that as well. Um, you know, like I said, it, 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 that, that was that was the biggest kind of lease for me. Uh, the second thing was you do have limited control. Um, you're getting some second, you know, some secondhand knowledge sometime on the terms, stuff like that. It was a little definitely a con for sure. And then communication issues. That was probably one of the biggest cons we had. It was just he didn't move fast enough. Yeah. He just flat out didn't move fast enough. And we were aggressive. We were ready to go. We had some pressures on us internally and because we were due to the franchise. He had to, we he just wasn't moving fast enough for sure for us. So what you want to do is definitely make the best decision for you. Yeah. Right? Or not, you know, whatever works best for you personally and take those things into consideration. It might be worth it to pay that extra. Yeah. You know. It's your first business and you don't feel confident negotiating and you just want that extra backing, then maybe it makes sense to use a real estate agent. But if you have negotiation and sales skills and you're ready to go in there and make this happen and save some money, then that's a great option too. Right. So just make that best decision for you. All right. A lot of times this is when we um, people start saying like, man, do I have to be an expert? Do I have to have a bachelor's degree in business to open my business? Do I need like heavy negotiation skills? And I, I don't want you to get stuck on that. Absolutely not. Whether it's your first business or your 20th business, it's not about being an expert in business administration, but you just have to have the willingness to learn and try new things. This is a process that you can learn as you go. So you don't have to be an expert from the beginning. So I just want you to have that confidence that you can make this happen without any prior business knowledge. And if you don't know, ask the questions, ask the, ask the commercial real estate agent, you know, why, what, why is that? It's okay. It's okay to ask why I'm constantly asking, well, what was your, what was your mindset behind that? What are we going for with that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So whether you could decide to go with a commercial real estate agent or on your own, I want you to feel empowered to know how to find commercial properties. Even if you are working with a commercial real estate agent, 
they will be bringing you properties or should be um, sharing properties with you. But I want you out there looking on your own as well. Sometimes there's properties that your commercial real estate isn't aware of. So there's two primary ways that we always go about this. First, you are going to laugh, but it works for us every time. And it is simply driving around and looking for those four lease signs. And it's crazy. Once you start thinking about the four lease signs, you're going to see them everywhere. So recognizing yeah. names and everything. <laughs> yes. It's just still to this day, I'm like, ah, oh, remember that guy. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things for sure. When we were looking for, every time we were looking for a business, we would hop in the car and we would, you know, grab a giant diet coke and drive around for three hours just looking at the area and it's such a good way to get out of the car go peek in the windows and see these yeah. it's sometimes better than you know looking at a bunch of specs online so um and a lot of times they'll put those four lease signs up before they even make it to the online websites so sometimes those properties will go before they even hit online right. listings so driving around is still a great way you know it sounds simple and easy yeah, but well, dinner in the area it's another way to check out the demographics it's another way to just see you know what the vibe of the town is it somewhere that you that you want to be in you know right absolutely so the second way is searching online and these are my two favorite websites i don't want you to go to them now but write them down loopnet.com is my personal favorite they will um provide you any retail spaces in your area and um, they're going to give you all those information that we were going over yesterday. So it's going to give you those demographic information, the household income, um, the traffic counts. It's going to provide all of that for you within those reports. So it's a great way to evaluate those listings. So um, search online, drive around, air a little bit of combination of both. We definitely did the combination of both. All right. Let's move on to the five pillars of a good location. So these are the five things that we want you to be looking for when you are looking for a location to ensure that you are set up for long-term sustainability and profitability. So I go here? All you first, <laughs> the first one is going to be high traffic. Uh, ensure the location has high drive-by has high drive-by or walk-by traffic. One of the two, you want to make sure people are there. You want to make sure people are there. You don't want to have to, you know, that's just that extra step to have, have them get. If you have them in that immediate area, that's it's just going to make it that much easier. Yeah. So um, high traffic, like that's just the golden rule. Um, no matter what, you've got to have people there. Like you want to meet them where you are. I think that we forget sometimes that one of the benefits of brick and mortar businesses is that we get to choose a location that's automatically where people are. So we can put our location where the people are. So I want you to go around in your city or town and go find where are the busiest areas and see if you can find a space there. And yes, those are going to be the more expensive areas, but that's for a reason because your revenue in those areas will likely be double what they would be in an area that has absolutely no traffic. And faster. And, and overall, just just faster. You won't have to have as many impressions. Yeah. You know. So you know, when you look at those reports, you can look at those traffic counts. So they'll tell you how many people are actually driving by. There will be counts like daytime traffic and nighttime traffic. So consider those things. Like when you are thinking about, um, like, is my business going to be open at night? Like, if it's not, then you want high daytime traffic. Um, and then consider the walk by traffic. And the best way to evaluate that is just driving there, right? right. Like right. we would go there multiple times a day and go see how many people are sitting in the parking lot, how many people are walking by. Um, those are those make big impacts. Go different days of the week, check it out on the weekend, check it out during the day. When you're making a long term commitment like this, you got to be kind of a little investigator. Right. And so, really taking the time to see that high traffic is huge. But the number one thing that's going to make your business that much more successful is being in a high traffic area. You're going to end up spending less on marketing because you're not going to be driving as many people to your store. People are going to have more word of mouth, more visibility, and all in all, it's just a great thing. Yeah, it's impressions is, is what this game comes down to. And if you're able to see that, then, you know, as opposed to trying to drive them through through some other way, um, that's that's for sure what, you know. 
different places. And you want to think of like, I don't know if we talk about this and we've talked about this in the other podcast, Mm -hmm. uh, in the podcast, um, these five pillars and go into pretty good depth on it. But like, like businesses and stuff like that is definitely another in the walk-in traffic, walk-by traffic, think gyms, grocery stores, where do people go? You know, yeah. stuff like that, that they're going to see you. We have, we're right by a chiropractor and stuff like that. And people still five years later, are like, right. Well, the chiropractor all the time. And I just now saw you. And I'm like, what? what? <laughs> you know, but just it, to me, it, it feels like a good, you know, it's a good, that's a good thing. That means that there's more out there and that not everybody's seen us. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. All right. So number one is a high traffic area that's either drive by or walk by traffic or best would be both. Right. Let's dive into number two. So this is going to be your anchor stores or compatible stores. So let me first tell you what an anchor store is. An anchor store is like Kyle just mentioned, they're going to be your large chain, like grocery stores, like we have Kroger's down here or, you know, even a Walmart, Walmart. Um, or a large gym, like an LA Fitness or a Lifetime Fitness. Um, those large locations that drive traffic multiple times a week. We go, you know, typically if we have a gym membership, we should be going multiple times a week. I'm more like once a month, but um, if we right. have, um, but grocery stores, the people are going there at least once a week, typically, if not more. Um, those are places that people frequent and are naturally drawing tons of traffic. So when you see most shopping centers, you usually see like one anchor store and a bunch of like smaller retail locations. So if you are able to be in a location with a large chain anchor store, that is great for your business. Now, not every shopping center is going to have an anchor store per se. So the next thing that we would look for are compatible stores. So compatible stores are stores that have a similar audience as yours. So yesterday we took the time to dive into your ideal customer avatar. So that was who right. your ideal customer is. Now, for a compatible store, you want to see stores that have a similar ideal customer avatar as yours. So, for example, a lot of times you will see like massage studios and nail salons right next to each other. And they do that for a reason because they have a crossover audience. So a lot of times, maybe when you're going to get a massage or your hair done or something, then it makes sense to just hop over right next to them and get your nails done. Um, so. Look for businesses that would have the same audience as you. So when they walk by, like we do get a lot of business from the like chiropractor because um, they are there for some sort of health reason. And so then they hop over and they're curious about other ways that they can. Pain and inflammation. And that's that's one of the things that we help with. Smoothie factory was right next to us. All that stuff. It all drove traffic. So a lot of things to this. We, our Frisco store, were anchored to a Walmart. And I think the rent on that it was about the same size, right? But the rent on that was it was higher because it was next to a Walmart. But we made that up in the marketing. Our marketing budget was so much less because yeah. you had people, tens of thousands of people not flying by you on Preston Road at 60 miles an hour, not on the highway like that Plano store was. They were going by at 10, 15 miles an hour. And they would just stop. Yeah. I mean, they would see the, you know, we did, we do a lot of things to catch people's eye and stuff like that. We had flags, we had, you know, cheap things like that, gorilla marketing, yard signs. Yeah. And it got people in and just because they were on their way to Walmart, not doing much shopping. And then, hey, I drove by three, four times. And just today I decided to stop by. Yeah. That we didn't, I mean, you don't really have to, I didn't have to pay or send them a, you know, send them a, a, a letter. Yeah. They didn't have to see us on Facebook 17 times. They just saw the building because what they were doing in their day-to-day -day life. Yeah. And that's, it, it, it's hard to quantify that actual number, but it, it really does. We've seen it time and time again with the different locations. It's just a, a significantly less amount in marketing. So yeah. People are already there. Absolutely. All right. So number one was high traffic. Number two was an anchor store or a compatible store. Number three is competition. You want to dive in here, Kyle? Yes, competition. Boo. No, um, definitely evaluate your nearby competition and see if it will help or if it will hurt, right? If you have, when we have people right across the street from us, we open first, but it didn't necessarily hurt us as much. 
because of the demographics and everything like that, the city itself was big enough was big enough to support it. Um, so it, it just wasn't, you know, but if you're, you know, you don't need to be right across the street if you can't, if you can't, you know, if you can avoid it, let's say, you yeah. Know. But, but, and then also, like we said before, we, we told you how yesterday and how to kind of evaluate a lot of that. Yeah. But as far as location is concerned, yeah, yes and no. I mean, if you guys are doing something a little bit different, you know, it doesn't always hurt. CVSs are always right across the street from, uh, yeah, you know, Walgreens. Yeah, I think competition can be a great thing or it can be a harmful thing. I think the key thing is that you just need to be aware of where your competition is around you when you're looking at locations. Sometimes it's a great thing. Like if you have a very specialized business, like let's say you're a horse feed store that specializes in XYZ, there probably aren't a lot of those businesses. So people might be traveling from a very far distance to get to you. So it might actually make sense to be near your competition. That way, when they don't find what they're looking for, they just hop across the street and go to you. So in some scenarios, it is a good thing to be near your competition because of that convenience. Um, but other times, you know, if there's not a lot enough demand, then you don't want to be right next to them if you can prevent it. Now, does that mean competition isn't going to come in from the future? I think we've told you that is definitely not the case. So really making sure that you are differentiating yourself and focusing on your niche like we went over yesterday is vital. It's absolutely vital. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. So number three, competition. Evaluate if it's good or bad for your competition for your business and make sure you're just aware of where your competition is as you look for locations. Number four is visibility. Now, this is probably the most important one, in my opinion. Um, I always say envision the front of your store the billboard because guess what it is it is a giant billboard you are paying for a giant billboard every month and if nobody can see your billboard then it's practically useless so a lot of people will find location maybe it's very high traffic and there is an anchor store it's right next to a grocery store it's at the very back end of the unit and unless you knew it was there you can't see it and to be honest, our first location was kind of similar to that. Um, we had compatible businesses. We were a high traffic road, but we went with the very side corner end unit, the only one that was available because we were just so excited to open and we had to have it. And to be honest, in the beginning, it was a little bit of a struggle to get people to visibly see us. It was we, our third choice. I mean, it really was. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think by the time we got to our second and third and fourth, like we were able to see the difference of, you know, when when your store was extremely visible and right next to a Walmart, the traffic just naturally flowed in. It didn't take months like our first one. Sure. So um, which there are always ways around it and you can adapt like we did with our first store. We just found more signage. But if you can have that visibility from day one, it's. It's a game changer. Yeah, if you can't see it from the street, then, you know, I mean, taking, you know, things to take into consideration, like, can that tree be cut down, you know, like, or it's seasonally, right? If it's winter and there's a tree in front, like, I'm saying this because we have a tree right in front of our, at our store, we have to make sure that that's trimmed up, but it was something to definitely take into consideration. Yeah. All of those things. Is it being blocked? Is it, you know, do people fly by here at 80 miles an hour? All of that. I mean, yeah. It's all is to be taken into consideration. You're going to, a sign is a significant investment in your business. Will it be seen? Yes. You know, yep. Will it be seen? I think that's a great point on the obstructions. You know, go see, is there a tree that's kind of grow over the sign? We did that and we were able to negotiate in our lease that the tree was going to be trimmed. Right. Um, is there a big pole that makes it unvisible from the opposite side of the road? Um, go look for those things and scope out and just make sure every Every square footage of the front of your building is going to be visible. From all angles. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I don't know if we touch on this, but like the marquee, or, you know, is the marquee visible to see your name? Is there space on the marquee for yes. you to go on there so that when they're driving to Walmart, they see 10 barrel brewing company all the time? Right. I mean, it's, it's, is there, do, do they offer these things? Are they actively working towards promoting your business as well? You know? Absolutely. Yes. All right. 
So number five is the square footage. Do you want to dive in here, Kyle? Yeah, so you definitely want to take into consideration not only what your business needs now or what you're looking for in the future. You want to um, consider, you know, like ancillary business, businesses and all types of different services, um, you know, thing, things of that nature. When we dealt with Samantha, so I remember dealing with Samantha. She did that women's clothing boutique, certainly not my forte, but she had a hell of a time finding a location. Um, and she ended up going with a very one that wasn't all that visible. Now, we I we advised her super hard against this. I'll be totally honest with you. Um, and she was strong-willed, she had a plan and she had a ton of drive, and it was great. She ended up going with that location. Um and she was able to, it, it, it was pretty obstructed too, if I'm not too mistaken, but she ended up going with that location because like us, she, I don't want to say she panicked, but she felt forced into the situation. She did go with it. It ended up working, but she used signs and was able to figure out kind of the traffic pattern and customer flow. Um, it, it, did, it had the potential point being is it's not like the end all be all and there's ways to kind of curve it. And also, I mean, we we advise we advise against it. We just we uh, to be yeah. totally honest with you. But she still ended up doing great because we were able to get her to kind of move and work with what you have. That's a lot of it has to do with it. Yeah. You know, you, you have some ability. There's a lot of compromise and stuff like that. And we'll kind of you know dive in in a little bit to show you kind of what where the things are important to yeah. you and stuff like that. And I think the whole point here is that we want you to prioritize what is most important to you. When we met with Samantha, it was like, okay, so you're choosing a location that's not that visible, but she kept saying it was high traffic and that was important to her. And she was able to find a way that she could use signage to get people to her location. So what is most important to you? I want you to put it in the chat. One, two, three, four, or five. Is it having square footage that is on point? Is it making sure that your competition isn't around? Is it making sure that your business is visible and people can be seen? Is it finding a location that's near an anchor store, or compatible businesses, or is it having a high traffic, high drive-by or walk-by traffic? Which one would you prioritize the most? Tell us in the chat. And obviously, price is 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 a priority is a priority as well. But you can justify the prices based on this. I would recommend too, when you guys are going through your locations and stuff like that. I would I would put these in order and figure out which one is most important to you from top to bottom and then kind of attack then attack it that way for sure i'm seeing a lot of one in three and yeah. i i you guys are right i'm don't playing. underestimate those anchor stores though i'm telling you i'm telling you it's it you're able to pivot it's not only one thing about the actual people it, it's the kind of people it's not about the number yeah. it's about who it, it really is it's about yeah. who not how many that, that's another thing that was was able to really dig in on. And I think that you brought up a good point with price because that's where one of the biggest mistakes that we see people make is they make the decision on their lease or I'm sorry, on their location solely based on the cost of their lease. And I'm here to tell you going with the least expensive space is not a good idea. Like I promise you, I can assure you that even if you're just paying a thousand dollars more a month, it's likely that your sales could be $10,000 more. Like, I mean, you know, I'm right. throwing numbers out here, but what I'm saying is that it's so worth it because the marketing that you have to do to get your store visible and get the traffic into your store, if it's not in a high traffic area and if it's not visible, it's going to be costly. So you want to consider those things. I know sometimes that upfront cost of the lease is scary. Right. Believe me, I know. But I can assure you that if you're naturally in an area that has high traffic, it's going to be that much easier to get those people from the parking lot into your store rather than from blocks and blocks away into right. your store. So, right. oh, I love it. Susie's prioritizing. There's some, yes, me too. Oh, Y'all are awesome. There's a lot of things that are kind of taken into, you know, consideration or we kind of take for granted just for sake of time, but like, is the place clean? Is it a nice area? You know, yeah. like that, that it goes with the territory, obviously. 
Have any of you started looking for a location? You can give us a yes or a not yet. We don't say no's here, just a not yet. But are you? have you guys started? Yes. Rashonda, kind of, sort of, yes. <laughs> Love it. Perfect. What have you guys been seeing? Have you, I'm, I'd love to know in the chat. Have you been finding places with high traffic that are visible? You Anchor see, stores. There's a ton of availability down in DFW. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I think, um, you know, unfortunately, some businesses didn't survive the pandemic. So there are a lot of commercial real estates open. Well, I, a lot of businesses weren't doing well prior to the pandemic yeah. and found clauses and used the pandemic as an out. We that saw is a lot another of other thing that, I, that. that we saw a lot of that. It was like, wait a second, that store was doing fine. They were able to just some, um, they were able to get, get out, out of leases. Yeah, get out of leases. Yeah. 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 Perfect. Love it. Not great visibility. A lot of really expensive. Paula, just, I know that the expense can be worrisome, but like I said, consider, I mean, obviously if it's not feasible for you, don't put yourself in a bad position, but just consider maybe you will have to spend less on your marketing budget if the property is more expensive. Um, and don't be afraid. I know sometimes like our first business, we were so excited. We did rush in a little bit to our lease. And if we would have been a little bit more patient, something visible might may have popped up. So don't let the excitement make you move on a bad decision. But sometimes at the end of the day, you do just have to make the best decision for the, that time being. And if it does have traffic, high traffic, maybe not visibility, there are ways. If we didn't have that specific place, though, I don't know that we'd be doing what we're doing there right now. The space was built out a certain way. It was looking back on it in the beginning, we were so naive. We wanted something right up by this, right up by that. And it didn't, it, we were able to utilize the space so much more. I mean, we use every square inch yeah. of that spot and it was already built out for it. And looking back on it, it was very conducive to what we were doing and it saved us a ton of money and build out. I mean, the thing had shelves in there already. It already had, uh, you know, it had sinks and water in every single suite. It was built. It was a, it was an old salon suite that the lady was using, and it, 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 we were able to transform it into the float rooms and all that stuff. There was a lot. There was a lot to be considered there for sure. Yeah, for sure. All right, your location checklist number four. This is a resource that you can find in the work. Um, this is a printable checklist. This is a resource for you to take with you. Now, everything, so what I want you to do is take this checklist with you when you physically tour the locations. Um, all the information on here, like square footage, traffic count, the price, the population, household income, that's information that the landlord should be providing you. But if they are not, I want you to ask them these questions. Um, fill out this checklist when you go into these locations to visit. Um, you're going to write down what you like about the location and what you don't like about the location. And then after you go visit your multiple locations, I want you to visit more than one. I want you to use this checklist to compare locations so that you can sometimes just having a visual physically in front of you that you can see, okay, this is the price of this one, but this is the traffic count of this one. Mm -hmm. um, this is the square footage of this one, but this is the population of this one. Sometimes comparing those numbers right in front of you can really help you get clear on which one's right for you it takes the emotionality out of it right i mean when i when we would show up to some of these places i would be like oh my gosh this is horrible and then other times we would just be so enamored that you, yeah. i would have paid a thousand dollars a square foot for the thing you know yeah. what i mean so it was very this allows you to kind of take a step back get out of that you know emotional game yeah. and really make it a, a clear you know clear honest decision right yeah. So print this out. This is a resource that we've provided to you. Take it with you and, and utilize it. it. It can help you in the long run. All right. So I want you to ask yourself this question. And some of you were sharing this the other day, but what would you stop doing if you had a profitable brick and mortar business? One of our clients, we asked a couple of our clients this question, and Eric said, I was able to stop working for others and start being his own boss. He said he wanted to stop wearing a suit. Yeah. He one of the yeah. Things. He just don't want to go to work in a damn suit anymore, as you understand. Cool yes. guy. So nice beard. Are you like Eric? Are you wanting to stop working for others? 
Or maybe you're like Andrea who opened a pet grooming salon. She was able to stop feeling like something was missing in her life. She was in the corporate world and she started doing something she enjoyed, which was working with animals and being around other people that brought more joy to her life. So tell us in the chat, what is it that you would stop doing? Is it you would stop working for someone you don't like? Is it that you would stop cleaning your house and hire a maid? Um, what is it? Tell us what you would stop doing. I would stop working for others. That's the goal, right? Do something that makes you happy. I love it. I love it. That is the absolute goal. I have more time to do what I'm passionate about. That's beautiful. Stop working for others. I know. It's incredible to be your own boss. Stop searching for the perfect job. Definitely hiring the maid. I like that. Stop worrying about the next thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You worry about that thing. You worry yeah. about your thing. Yeah. Live and not exist. That's beautiful. Uh, that's great. Never go back to a corporate job. That's awesome. Love it. Love it. Yes. So taking the time to really find the right location. I touched on this earlier, but be patient. Take the time. Use these five pillars. A lot of you already prioritized which ones are more important for you. I want you to write those down. Keep those with you as you go throughout the location process and make sure that you're not just you're letting that excitement cross one of those off of your list. So keep that in the back of your mind. So my question for you is, would you love us to virtually hold your hand through the process of building and opening your brick and mortar business? Give us a yes if you'd like our help in the chat. <laughs> All right. Kyle, you wanted to... So you've got two options here, right? You guys can go on and, uh, on your own, right? In Based on the questions, you guys are fantastic. You have motivation. You have this. You have that. You are not any different than we were five years ago. There are things, however, where we come into play with the option two is we can do it together, right? The idea is to prevent you from making some mistake that you never even knew. Mistakes are typically right when something you do Makes you have a mistake, it happens. You're not at fault when you never anticipated something. How could you possibly anticipate something? Yeah. Right? How would you know that you could have saved money on the front end of your lease with by by foregoing all of, all of these things? That's what we're here to do. I'm not gonna paint your ceiling tile for you, as though I'd love to. I've got been <laughs> fantastic at it. But, but we'll tell you how to do it. Exactly. We can tell you how to do it, but we can also show you the opportunities that you can cut costs and get these things open faster and where to spend money. It is an investment, guys, to open a brick and mortar. It just is. But where you put the money on things that are important or what you even think is important versus isn't, that's where we come into play. Mm -hmm. So we have a 10-week virtual experience called Brick and Mortar Academy that we would love to invite you all to to get started with us. Right. Brick and Mortar Academy is the only training of its kind out there that teaches you exactly how to open a profitable, long-lasting brick and mortar business without the confusion and overwhelm and guessing right. what to do next. So inside of Brick and Mortar Academy, we take you from idea all the way to grand opening with a module that walks you through every single step. We've really just touched the surface here right. this week of how to get started. But inside the academy, you will learn things like how to create a business plan that sets you up for success. How to not only, not just what to look for in a location, but we'll walk you through exactly what to negotiate and how to secure that location. We will teach you how to design and build your store in a way that will increase your sales. And we'll teach you the exact marketing that you need to be doing to generate buzz so that you have people lined up outside of your store on the day one. Right. It's the worst thing you can do is have an empty storefront when you've invested all this money up front and then you're like, oh crap, where is everyone? Right. So we were going to show you how to do that. We'll also walk you through the exact systems and processes that you need set up so you don't have any tech overwhelm of wondering how to set up your POS or what sort of systems and processes you need. We'll walk you through effective merchandising strategies that will help you increase your sales so that you know how to display your products or your furniture or the layout of your store that increases customer flow. These are things that we've studied and learned over the years, and now we're sharing with you. Right. 
We've also got sales strategies on not how just to gain customers, but create them into raving fans. That's what we're going for. Fans, not customers, yes. guys. And customers. we'll show you how to run a successful grand opening that is not only busy and packed, but doesn't have a bunch of issues on that day like we did on our first one. But our, by, on our second and third, we nailed it and we've got a checklist that right. shows you exactly how to and, do and that. And that's the whole point is by that, you know, is to get you to, so that it feels like you're that you're at that third one. Right. All right. So inside of the experience, it's a 10 week long experience. It is eight modules sharing with you our exact roadmap and strategies to opening a profitable brick and mortar business. Now, we normally charge around $5,000 starting when we work with people one on one consulting in this way. But that's not what we are going to be charging. No, we're not charging you that. That's not, no, 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 no. But not only will you get those eight modules, but you will get 10 weeks of live Q&A. I know you guys have been finding this Q&A sessions valuable. You get to bring your specific questions and we provide you personalized answers. So we will have a private Facebook group community where we can continue the momentum and network that you guys have already been creating. And we will do one hour long Q&As for 10 weeks straight. So as you go out through this process, you can bring your questions to us, which is a $997 value. So we are not special. I said this earlier, right? We... I didn't have 30, 40 years of retail experience. I mean, I don't even think I, you know, I never even worked at a clothing store or anything like that. We just figured it out through a lot of trial and error and a lot of, you know, I don't want to say bad decisions, a lot of decisions that seemed right at the time and made a lot of sense. They just didn't work out or work out as well. Uh, we just now have documented and taken into place. We are not as great as it. We are great at putting these things into play. And Joanne has done a fantastic job of road mapping these things, okay? So that we're not going in here and just saying, okay, well, I have to do this, I have to do that. You know exactly where to spend your time. You're not wasting time. You're not having to learn these things or find some or find another reset or find another uh, find another solution to this. Typically, a lot of these, a lot of people, or what we've seen, have you know, as we've gotten into this, if you're almost, and we're almost a partner in this. And a lot of these businesses and a lot of stores that we've worked with, we have, you know, we have interest in these stores, but we don't want that with you guys. It's not what we're going for. We just want to be here to help you guys in this fashion, to help keep you moving in that way and teaching and really, really teaching and guiding you in the, in the proper way. So you don't make that $2,500 purchase that was totally unnecessary with no ROI. That's the value in what, in what we're trying to do. That's right. Absolutely. So as another bonus, in addition to the 10 weeks of weekly live Q&A, we will be sharing with you our ultimate marketing toolkit. This includes over 500 done-for-you templates that you can customize to utilize on social media. It also includes the cheat sheets for how to utilize Instagram and Facebook to drive local traffic, because that's a different world than if you're just selling online. Right. Um, we've got guides in, on how to go live on social media, um, social media prompts. It's a packed full marketing toolkit that's super valuable, something uh, would have helped me a lot. Yeah, the, the, the work's already done there. That in and of itself, you'll make your investment back with those, not, not in time, but by using those posts to drive traffic. It's an automatic way to see just how you're able to track the traffic. So that's another $1,000 value. And with our program, if you sign up with us, you do get a 14-day money-back guarantee. So if you do the work, you get started with us for two weeks and you are not satisfied, all you have to do is show us that you've done the work and we'll gladly give you it. No one ever does this. I mean, you guys know what you're getting. We, you know, we've been together for the last three days. You guys know what you're getting here. So it's what you see is what you get. And bonus number three, this is probably one of my, I think the most valuable is we're going to provide you an exclusive legal masterclass with an actual lawyer. So right. we're not going to sit there and pretend that we can answer your legal questions. And I know there's a lot of them when you get started right. in brick and mortar business, but we are going to have an actual lawyer spend a private class with just you guys for a Q&A and a session on what you should be looking out for and how to protect your business. So that's another $600 value. And that 501c3, all that stuff showed up before. He can definitely lend, lend help on that too for the nonprofits. 
So here's what you get. You're gonna get eight modules over the course of 10 weeks inside a, a private Facebook community. You will have access to ask us questions throughout the entire experience anytime, but we will also come to you for live Q and A's for those 10 weeks. You'll get the ultimate marketing toolkit and the exclusive legal masterclass with a lawyer himself. It's a total value of 7,500. I think yeah, that. no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But we know you're just getting started and like us, you know, right. any investment that you make in the beginning is scary. So we want to make this more feasible for you. So the total cost of our 10 week program is only 997 and we're making it even easier for you to get started today by just making six monthly payments of 197. So you can get started in our program for 197 today. And Adriana is putting the link in the chat if you want to get started. And at the beginning, I told you that there was a <laughs> way to get a 30-minute free one-on-one -on -one session with us. So if you take action on this quickly, Brick and Mortar Academy, we are only enrolling people until the 18th because we are getting started with a live experience on the 19th. So it will close on the 18th. But if you sign up today, before we're even done with this call, we're going to give you a 30-minute one-on-one strategy session with both me and Kyle sure. so that we can sit down with you personally and get to know you better and help you better throughout the whole experience because we're going to know your business and be able to guide you and direct you even more. So you have to sign up by the done, time we're done with the Q&A, this bonus will go away. You will still be able to enroll in the Academy, sure. but we won't be giving away this free bonus. But we love rewarding our fast, fast action go-getters. Yes. Another C twister. Fast. So here's what you will come by joining us. You will overcome the fear of no one coming into your business. I know that's a huge fear, but we're going to make sure that that doesn't happen. We're going to overcome the fear of putting yourself off there or the fear of investing in your business. Sometimes you're not sure what to invest in, but we're going to make sure that you know exactly what to invest in and when and what not to invest in. Sure. You're going to overcome that fear of going all in in your business and the fear of not knowing what to do or when to do it. So once again, you can look for the link in the chat. We can have two options for you. You can save a little money by paying $9.97 all up front, or if it better matches your budget at this time to get started at $1.97 a month, you have that option as well. And we won't need 10,000 people. It's going to be a small, we're trying to, we're putting cats on that too. So we were, we're able to give you know, give our attention. And it's a group with 10,000 people here, yeah. guys. And we'll be able to really dig in and ask the extra questions and say that pertains a little bit more towards you. I know a lot of this stuff in the last few days has been a lot more high level, but we'll be able to take the time and effort and really be able to pivot here and leverage some of our, a ton of our uh, connections and whatnot yes. too. Yeah. So it's, you know, it, we'll be able to definitely yeah. dig in for sure. We have a bunch of guest speakers planned from exactly. topics like branding to SEO to Google My Business, um, all the things that people have questions to your rewards program. We've got so many guest speakers that will be coming in throughout the experience. Right. Um, so when you click on the link, you'll see a page like this that says enroll now. You can pick which op payment option is right for you, the 997 or the 197. Then you'll see a page like this that says lets you complete your enrollment. And once you see this page, you are in for an incredible 10-week experience that all starts on June 19th right. with exclusive access to us. You can even log into your members area starting today. When you register, you'll get an email in your inbox with all of your login information. You can log into your brick and mortar training area and start the welcome week module, which just walks you through what to expect in the program. And we'll give you access to our private Facebook group, which are just for members of this academy. I know there's been great momentum and community that we've seen in the fantastic. chat and it's amazing yeah. and we would love to continue it, but we are going to be migrating it over to the brick and mortar academy. So if you want to keep that momentum, join us so that we can keep that community going. Once again, the links in the chat, 197 or 997. So I want you to remember why you are here. You showed up today, even though you are incredibly busy. I know all of you could be doing a million and one other things, 
You showed up because you have a passion to open your dream business. And it's time to bring that reality to life. And we are here wanting to support you the whole way through. I know it sounds scary though, right? I mean, I get it. It's But the time is going to pass by anyway. So yeah. you're just going to left wondering what... It's an opportunity. That passion carries you so far. Yeah, it really does. It really can. So it's time to it's time to pivot on that and act on it, guys. The time's going to pass by. Yeah, it really is. So I know a lot of you feel stuck. You have a dream, but you're really unsure what to do next. Now you know how to find a location, but what do you do after that? And I know it's hard to not know what your next move is. We've been there. We've been there. Yeah, or maybe you feel tired, tired of not using your strengths and passion at a job that you don't really love. Or maybe you just want more. You know you're capable of creating a business and life with more flexibility and financial freedom. The other day, you know, I was able to jump in the pool at two o'clock in the afternoon before going to the store on like a random Tuesday. And I was like, this is really yeah. cool. Like five years ago, I never would have dreamed that that was possible. And that was just a dream come true. It's the little things, honestly, yeah. right? I mean, it's that, it's that we have more time together. It's we have better conversations. We're not entangled in some drama in, in corporate America that takes up brain space. It just does. Yes. It just does. So once again, we've got the link in the chat. We'd love for you to join us and get started with us. And don't forget that we have the 30-minute bonus one-on-one um, -on -one strategy session with us if you sign up on this call. So we are going to get started with some q and A. I see a lot of questions in the yes. chat already, but if you are on the fence for some reason, I'd love for you to put in the chat, I'm on the fence because, and let us know, and let us know if we can help you better understand if this is right for you, because we don't want you to join right. if this isn't a good fit for you. Sure. But if you are considering it, we'd love to answer your questions. So let's move on with some Q and A. I think first up we have Claudia who would like to know, what do you think about starting in a location like Salon Suites? So I think that's like the Salon Suites where you can rent a specific room. Right. And I don't think that's a bad idea. Um, if, if I'd love to know what your specific business is, Claudia, if you want to put that in the chat. Um, I mean, if they're selling fireworks out of there, I wouldn't yeah. it. But I, it's all going to come down to what the customer experience is going to look like. You know, when they walk in the door and does your product match with everything? You know what I'm saying? Um, it, it It's all about the customer experience. Yeah. That's that's what I would say. So, yeah, she's a woman's clothing boutique. Women's clothing. Yeah. So I think that that would be a great fit, actually, because there's going to be yeah. naturally a lot of women coming to those salon suites, which is driving traffic for you. Um, so some things that I would try to really take advantage of would be signage. Where is the sign going to be for your business? And are you able to have signage that is clearly visible to anybody coming into those salon suites? Or are they going to see you? Just make sure that that's that's going to be right. there. If so, I think that's a, a good way to drive traffic. Yeah. Um, or the unit right business. next to it, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it'd be a good way to start. I don't think it's a terrible way to start. Yeah. And you could scale from there. For sure. Yeah, I think that's sure. a great, great option. All right. Lauren says, can you touch on the pros and cons of a looming recession on establishing a brick and mortar? All I've got something and then you can share here. I have had a lot of people that have concerns about investing in things right now. And I can tell you, most of the people that we've worked with have actually seen their sales increasing or staying the same over these this past six months, which has been great. Now, I get when, I, when I study the research on the future of brick and mortar, I really, truly believe that Brick and mortar is not in going anywhere, but the reason people are going to want to go to a brick and mortar is changing. People want an experience. Right. They want connection, community. They want to try things. They want to touch things. They want to be entertained. They want to be delighted. And that's what we teach you inside Brick and Mortar Academy is how to create an experience because I don't think that when you create an experience that you have to worry so much about economic trends because people want to come visit you. Do you have anything to add there, Kyle? No, I think, I mean, if, if you're going to try to sell some stuff behind glass cases, like I think a lot of that's going away, but it's all about the customer experience. It's about that immersiveness. It's about, you know, did we talk about that on the, 
on the podcast with the different yeah. businesses and stuff like that. Yeah, we kind of go over, you know, how to differentiate yourself and and you want to create a way for them to come, a reason for people to come in. Like, I, yeah, I buy a ton of stuff online, but I still go to my favorite stores all the time. Yeah. Like, I'm still in there all the darn time. Absolutely. So, yeah. But no, I mean, I, I get it. Um, a lot of, you know, cream rises to the top too. And, and a lot of cream of the crap has already gone. And there's been a shift. There's definitely been a shift. And there's, and honestly, commercial real estate agents in our area are super aggressive to get stuff filled. They are. So there's a way to kind of go through that, you know. Yes. I think so. All right. Corey wants to know, will having my business in a shopping center break? Financially? I don't know. I'm... Well, I think, yeah. I mean, Corey, obviously we don't want it to break you financially. If it's going to be completely, you know, there are some locations out there that are just way above market value yeah. and stuff like yeah, yeah for sure man like yeah i mean i get it but. but if it is um just you know a little bit higher than most locations i'd say it's worth it like yeah. it's just that traffic that you're going to get or that visibility you know that of being by a shopping center or a large high traffic shopping center yes. is worth it yes. it's yes. worth it yeah yes there's a i think it was a, a super specialized African grocery mark. I keep bringing up uh, our Fritzko store, but like, I think I've never thought it would have survived, but it was just, there was so much more foot traffic and it was so specialized and the customer experience, I mean, it smelled and then it was horrible. But anyways, it still did fantastic because it's the overwhelming amount of traffic. It just did. Yes, absolutely. All right. Ashley wants to know, would a good example of an anger store be like Marshall, yes, TJ Maxx, Target? Yes, yep, you're yes, right on the money. Yes, yes. Right on the money. Um, that's exactly right, Ashley. What would be a good estimate of a salon suite startup cost? Then, um, so Ashley, yesterday we provided our budget cheat sheet. So without knowing all your details, I could right. give you an estimate, but use that budget cheat sheet. It's inside of the workbook. Um, but that cheat sheet will allow you to estimate all of those costs, and then you'll have a better idea. Oh, um, Felicia yes. and Devin, what about leasing in a mall? A mall is an extremely high traffic area. Now, I will tell you, some malls are a little dead yes. right now. So you need to make sure that the mall is actually high traffic. But they are very aggressive, and they are very cheap. And a lot of these leases are month to month as well in a mall from time to time. Mm -hmm. There, there can be opportunity to I, test it out. They can't to test it out. There's, you know, so there's, you know, we we were hot and heavy on one of that that one in Fort Worth. We were pretty hot and heavy on it, and I would have done it a lot different than they did. And they're still in business despite the fact I don't think that's the greatest. It, well, it's a high traffic but area. it's a super high it's traffic area. area i would have people out you know handing out flyers and just going nuts yeah. all the time i would have a big party i would so i would have sold merch i would have done it a lot different than they did and not that we yeah. were, would have been right or wrong or anything like that you know malls get a bad rap the safety of a mall but you know i i think i think that there's definitely opportunity there and and, and, and there is some value there as well yeah for sure I would see if is, is your target demographic going to malls. If they're not going to malls, then obviously you don't want your business in a mall. But if sure. your target audience, which is, you know, sometimes younger or might be more moms, you know, take a look at the demographics that are going to the mall and see and then take a look at how much traffic. Is that a high traffic mall? Because if you have people walking around all day it's so easy to capture somebody that's standing right in front of your business then capture somebody that's sitting at home right so um i think it can be a great thing just ask yourself a couple of those questions okay yvette when should we negotiate the lease right away should i do it in the beginning or when the lawyer gets involved after the lease is generated okay so um Typically, you know, if you decide you want to move forward with a location, you will provide them what's called a letter of intent. Right. Inside Brick and Mortar Academy, we should provide you a letter of intent template that you can use. And that kicks off the negotiation process. Mm -hmm. If you are using a commercial real estate agent, they will do this process for you. If you're doing it yourself, you will start with that letter of intent. Like I said, we have that template inside of Brick and Mortar Academy. And we walk you through exactly how to use that. 
So you're going to kick off the negotiation process and um, what you want negotiated in that lease. Now, it's always a good idea to, as soon as you, as soon as they give you a physical uh, lease, to have a lawyer evaluate that. Sure. So that's something we kind of did in tandem while we were negotiating. So we were negotiating specifics like price and free rent and, um, you know, how much allowance for repairs and things like that. But the lawyer was going and reading the dotted lines of, hey, can I get out of this if there's a pandemic? Yeah, we had, a, we had lawyers review the final so, goal. So, and, yeah. And the negotiations don't always happen on the lease term or lease amount too, like Joanne touched on. It could be TA, it could be TA allowance, it could be free rent, it could be any of these things. So these are levers to pull. Also keep in mind as you're viewing something or you're purchasing anything, don't walk in there and go, oh my gosh, this is right by Walmart. And you're saying this in front of the agent, you know, you want to kind of say, oh, I don't know if that's going to work for me, you know, and just kind of play it, play it even, Stephen, because we were so excited the first time that they had us over a barrel and they knew it. And we kind of, you know, but as we got a little bit more savvy to, to it towards as we did the second and third. All that yes. Stuff. Yes. All right. We've got a question. Can you repeat what you said about square footage? I'm not sure what it was exactly that we had said, but, you know, essentially with square footage, you want to ensure that you have the room to grow. If you, um, let's say you're just starting off with some small product lines, but you want to add in product lines or services, you want that space to be able to grow with you and your business. Um, but you also don't want too much space. I hate walking into retail stores and it looks like there's two things in there. So you just want to be careful that you're not getting more space than you need. Plus you're paying, that just means you're paying for more than you really need. So if I didn't answer exactly what it was, let me know. Yeah. All right. LaShonda wants to know, can you explain the build out process for retail space? Is it just like picking out upgrades for a new home construction? Or is there already a blueprint for the commercial space? Most of the time, your build out is all on you. So there's two different types of build outs. So if you get a second generation build out uh, unit, means somebody's already been in there. So there's already walls. There's already a bathroom. Water. There's already things like that. Most of the time, then you're just going to go make changes. Maybe you're going to change the paint. Maybe you're going to paint the ceiling tile. Um, maybe you want to add in some shelves um, and add in furniture. And that's something that you can do on your own. So that's something to consider when you're looking at the spaces. Now, other, um, or you might need to cut down all those walls and completely reconstruct it. Right. Now, if you're doing that, you'll typically hire a general contractor to manage that job. And we have a guide inside of Brick and Mortar Academy that is your complete guide to hiring and working with a general contractor. Um, so they will help you guide you through that experience. You'll want to talk to them before you sign your lease because they're going to tell you likely how much it is going to cost to um, get inside that space and build it the way that you want it. And then you're going to go to the landlord before you sign the lease and say, hey, I've got $20,000 of construction that this space needs because you know, the HVAC needs repairs, the walls need it's to be redone. It's work for me as it is. And a lot of times the landlord will say, okay, if you, we will give you 15,000 then to do that. Um, so like they'll, and they'll pay X that amounts back. worth of free rent while you do the build out, th things like that. But no, I mean, you know, that that's kind of the beauty of it is you can manipulate it how you want and then use your, like we used our people on it, which was great because we were able to save money. Yeah. Wow. You know, it's like I had a guy who could do, you know, as long as he's within code and he'll pass an inspection, then there's really no, you know, I mean, it, it was, an, it was, an, we used it as an advantage and I could do so much, you know, me and my friends could do so much of the work too. And it was nice because we could still basically pay ourselves yeah. to do that allowance. You know? Yeah. So if you haven't signed up for with us for Brick and Mortar Academy, these are all things that we go into great detail. Yes. So grab the link in the chat, get signed up. You want to take advantage of this 30-minute one-on-one session with us. I promise you it'll be so valuable. If you are on the fence, tell us why you're on the fence. Or if you've signed up, let us know that you have signed up. We cannot wait to get started. Let's move on to the next question. What is he? Christina, what is a good square footage amount? It really depends on the needs of your business. So um, I think 
I would go look at similar businesses. Like if you are a boutique, go look, go around looking at other boutiques. Typically, like their square footage front is only going to be about 500 square feet. And then the back may be like another 250 to 500 square feet. And you but, can count that a lot of times to find that out, like tiles are usually 12 by 12 <laughs> or like ceiling tiles are two by four, two or two feet by four feet. So if you can look at how they're stacked, you can get a basic idea yeah. of about how big their showroom floor is, yeah. maybe not their back room, but you can, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you look <laughs> like at the ceiling tiles and certain things like that, you you can typically tell about how big that is as opposed to walking up to the front yeah. front cash and be like, how many square feet is this? Yes, absolutely. Yep. So go check out any similar businesses and see, you know, if you like the size of their space or maybe you want more space. So check that out. All right. Good question. What do you think of mobile or trailers to start in order to cut costs? I think it's a great, great way to get your business started, um, start generating some income and see, you can kind of see which parts of town, maybe your business does better. I, if I don't, let us know what your business is in the chat. Um, there are some types of businesses that do better mobile um, than others, but I think generally it's it's a great way to get started. It's great branding. It's great way to build some buzz and about your business. Right. You got anything else? No, I think it's a great. I mean, if if done if done correctly, you know, it could be quirky. It could be cool. It could be it could be neat. It could be something to be talked about. It, you know, that's goes back to this you know, whole retail the the looming recession. Like if it's something yeah. neat and quirky, people love that. Stuff. Yes, absolutely. You know. All right, our timer's out, but we're going to keep on rolling with keep questions rolling. since there's a lot of questions here today. But don't forget to register. We're, we'll still give that 30-minute one-on-one session if you register before we get off the call today. So um, link Adriana has put in the chat. So don't forget to join us. All right, Susie wants to know, current location I'm looking at is high traffic, um, drive-by traffic, medium visibility, low anchor nearby companies game plan is eye catching signage high higher marketing budget uh, stay connected to everyone who visits my worry is failing what are options of getting out of leases that you have seen susie i love that you're already thinking about okay you know i'm going to use signage to draw in that high drive by traffic and that you're considering a higher marketing budget because of it sure that's incredible i will say high drive by traffic is a great thing you really can you know use, flush up with yards yeah yard <laughs> signs sign spinners i mean you'd be surprised by the those little silly tacky things well, like check, your check with your city too they'll they'll give you ideas and the signage and the things that you can do and can't do and it'll tell you like honestly stuff that i never even thought of i was like oh shoot we should do that like balloons and stuff so that's another way to check so i would double check with the city on that too if you're going to use high signage so i know you have concerns about fail but i can tell you from all the plans that you're doing here i really think that you are setting yourself up for success here but options of getting out of the leases that you've seen i mean i it's rare but sometimes people have negotiated um like just a one-year lease so that they do have that option or like a re or a, a like one-year reevaluation period it's not always likely that landlords will give that but it's something you could ask for um to we see. found other tenants in and um what's it called, have been cool with it. Landlords and stuff have been cool that if we've essentially sold the business, had a sale of the business, and then they were able to move someone else in. And that got, that has gotten people out of leases before. So we, what Kyle's talking about is, so we had um, one location, we were just um, so busy and we couldn't manage it anymore. Um, so we actually found somebody to come take over the lease. Right. And you know, so you do have that option if you wanted to find somebody else that wanted to open their business in that same location. Um, maybe you give them your customer contacts, things like that. There are ways to find other people and the landlord typically, you know, isn't, if it's another tenant, it's another tenant. Right. They're not mad about that. Right. Um, we just had to do what we had to do. There yeah. are things like obviously natural disaster pandemic clauses that could safeguard you from anything like that or an environmental disaster I would make sure, but I'm hoping we don't have to worry about that again. Um, We've had guys get up due to HVAC problems, water. I mean, yeah, you can make some. Yeah, yeah. 
I would say I think more this is a mindset shift that you need to to just, right. just set yourself up and change that perspective that you are not going to fail. Just go in and go at this knowing that you are setting yourself up for success and you're willing to do whatever it takes to get there. And I think that you're already doing that, Susie. Okay, next question. What is the um, number range that you would consider to be high traffic? The location I'm interested in is the Marsh Street in Arlington oh, you. and is near I-30. Uh, LoopNet estimates traffic count on Lamar is 15 to 22,000. That's a lot. That's a good that's traffic really count. Good. I would definitely yeah, say. That's on Lamar, which is what? Was it Lamar Street's 45, 55? And it's not like they're, it's not like, you know, actual 30 when they're going by at 100 miles an yeah. hour, too. That's, yeah. Which is another thing to consider. So when I'm comparing traffic counts, I'm just comparing location to location. So, you know, when I start saying traffic count in this city, it may be completely different in another city. So it's hard to, for me to give you a specific idea. But what I want you to do is go look at all the locations that you are comparing and just compare the traffic counts there, which ones are higher than the other. Um, but I think that sounds like a great one. So I want to own a strip mall with several businesses. Me too. <laughs> can you direct me to how I can get a strip mall? Oh, man. So we're I wouldn't say we're an expert on on actual builds of commercial spaces yet. I think you would um definitely you know look to work with like a commercial real estate developer um or maybe go find people that have done that um but we can reach out to our network and see if we know of anyone yeah um all right okay. who is joining us in brick and mortar academy it is kicking off on june 19th a 10-week live experience that we will be working with you um, to walk you through everything you know. And I want you to know that even if you aren't ready to open your business, you know, within the next 10 weeks, we get that. But what we're going to be doing within the, those 10 weeks is just giving you prepared and walking you through everything you need to know so that you are ready, you know what to look for, you know what to do, and you know what not to do. So we'd love for you to join us, and we are giving away a free 30-minute strategy session if you join up with us before the Q&A is over and wrapped up today. So if you are on the fence, let us know why you are on the fence today and let us address that for you. Okay, Ashley, any perks of hosting a pop-up store? Like how some brands such as Kylie Cosmetics or Birchbox rent a space for a month and move it around when they're getting ready to launch ever worked with brands that does this instead of a long-standing brick and mortar um so i we haven't personally worked with a brand that solely did pop-ups um i think just because we specialize more in the brick and mortar but we have a lot of brick and mortars that do pop-ups right. at other businesses and like we have one that does one every single weekend and that's a huge part of their profit is they and how they drive traffic is every single weekend they're popping up at different locations so it's hey go visit our store or come see us at this pop-up i think it's a great way to um especially in the beginning drive your um drive traffic to your store and just um increase your brand awareness so anytime you can do that and i can't see it a bad thing of if your business is just getting started um you know if you want to start that way to start testing out the waters and increasing your brand i i don't think that's a bad idea so love that all right i really want to do it but i'm on the fence because i don't have the full concept or the description of my business Fair. i'm afraid that my business idea is not different enough from other companies well, Skylar, that's exactly what we help you do in the academy. Right. You know, you may have one idea and after working with us, you may shift it to another idea. But what we help you do is see, continue the conversation that we started this week on how to differentiate yourself and how to set yourself apart. And we walk you through things like how to create your business philosophy and mission statement so you can get more clear on what it is that you want to provide as a business um, so that you you can be confident that you your concept is there. Well, we will allow you to vet it out. And then at the end, if you open it, that's kind of on. You'll have something full and open for you. If you find another idea, you just plug and play it into there. You'll have done all the work. You know, you'll know then what it takes, where to go. And then all you'll have to do is just plug and play. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, I think it's it would definitely be worth it. You'll be able to brainstorm. We can figure out ways to differentiate yourself. That's what we're all about is differentiate, differentiating yourselves. We tell each other all the time, why the hell would you come here when you could go by the three or four other stores that do exactly the same thing yeah. that we do? Why? Yes. And it's a, a litany of other reasons. And that's what we've built our business around. That's what we're doing. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, Felicia is looking at a location that is at a busy location. It is downtown and there's a lot of drive-through traffic, but not a lot of walk-through traffic. Would that be a good location? Absolutely. Sometimes, you know, if there's just people driving by and your sign is visible, it's like a billboard, right. then anybody that's interested, see, would one other thing I would just check, is it easy to turn into? Is he park yeah. there? Yeah. And is there space? Because if a lot of people are driving by and they see you, bingo, I want to go there, then they can pull in. That's Great. That's a good thing. Um, but make sure that they can pull in. Like Kyle said, there's enough parking. It's easy to access. Yeah, your your that your challenge is to get them out of their car then, right? I mean, just get them to slow down, look, slow down, and then pull in. And there's a litany of other ways to do that. Once they're there, I mean, the people are there. They're there. We just got to get them, you know, get them that last step. Yes. All right. So Marie says she's on the fence because of funding. So. Her, um, yes. We're going on funding tomorrow, aren't we? Yes. So you feel stuck. I get yeah, that, I get Marie. It. I, we were there too. You know, when we first got started, we set out all of our startup costs and we didn't have the money. Right. Um, but we just kept moving forward. We kept putting one foot in front of the other. You know, we were starting to look for locations before we even knew how we were going to pay for it. Right. But the more and more that we moved forward, the more and more things started falling together. And I just truly believe that in the entrepreneurial world, that's how it works. So that right. um, tomorrow we are going to share with you some ideas on how to get grants, how um, options for looking at investors, options for looking at loans, and just ways that you can save um, money and ideas to get you starting to make money. Um, and all of those things can happen as you start to learn and right. move forward every day. We we did um, some festivals to generate some selling our product. And that actually did generate more sales than we even thought. And it was a great way for us to just start getting our brand name out there. But you were able to start making in some money during those festivals. Um, while we um, were saving money so that we could put that towards our brick and mortar business. And then we also wound up um, applying for a ton of grants and we wound up getting a small one, but it was every little bit helps. So you just, still apply for grants. And yeah, we still do. Yeah. yeah. yeah Any, um, you know, so keep moving forward. And tomorrow we're going to walk you through exactly how to look for those things. But I'm telling you, Joining Brick and Mortar Academy will only help you eat even more. One of our guest speakers that we are bringing in with us is actually a grant specialist. So she's going to be able to come in inside the academy and walk you through a lot more details on grants. So that's something you don't want to miss. So I hope you join us, Marie. I'd love to have you. All right. Any other questions? If you are on the fence, let us know. I am on the fence because, and we will address that here for you on the call. Looks like we're running through all of the questions. If you have any questions, let us know. If you have not signed up yet, we want you in the academy. We want to continue helping you on this journey. We have been there. We don't teach you anything that we have not done ourselves and that we have not validated or, or proven for it to work for us. And so we want you to walk you through that process and be here for you, holding your hand through every step of the way. Yeah. So I hope that you join us. Remember, if you join before we're off of this call, we will give you that 30-minute free one-on-one -on -one strategy session with Kyle and myself. Anybody else on? <laughs> Dog's going. <laughs> All right. We will be back here tomorrow for funding um, on, on everything, how to fund your business, whether it's grants, loans, saving. we got a ton of ideas for you tomorrow. We hope that you join us in Brick and Mortar Academy. It's only going to be open to enroll until the 18th. So please sign up before then. And um, oh, we do have two gift cards to give away. You see here. 
Okay, we've got two giveaway winners and the drum roll. We are giving those to Bernice Jackson and Skylar Kraut. I hope I said that correctly. We will be emailing you those virtual gift cards, Amazon gift cards. Congratulations. We are so excited for you. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us and interacting with us in the chat today. We can't wait to be back with you tomorrow. And we hope to see you inside of Brick and Mortar Academy.